Hi everybody, welcome to a new tutorial from sound for more It's Leo speaking. Um, in this video, we are going to continue our journey in learning Groove Rider GR16 from Jim Audio. And today we are going to focus on part recording and also we are going to explain how to use the step editor. Before I delve into the tutorial, please uh, a reminder, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Uh, subscribing helps to bring more videos and tutorials like this one and also some giveaways. So let's start. I've just loaded uh, um, GR16 and um, just have an initialized um, um, pattern as it comes by default. Normally when you are working with uh, a, an initialized pattern, if you click play, you hear that kick drum, right? So if you click on the um, trigger first and then you click play again, you see that uh, it is part nine playing here, where it says kick as well. Now, if you go to the sequencer, so therefore you go in sequencer mode, okay, please make sure you're on part nine, right? As in trigger here, let's select part nine. If you go to the sequencer, you see actually the steps which are enabled. The sequencer mode here will show you all the 16 steps because you have 16 steps for uh, uh, per bar. Okay, so if you click play again, you see that for each of these steps, you have um, highlighted where the step needs to be active to play that sample, which in this case is the kick. So indeed, if I was to click here, I will activate the step there, and therefore the kick drum will play on step 11 as well. So let's try. So of course you can use this way to create your rhythm very quickly. So let's we let's go back to trigger, let's select the snare, let's go to the sequencer and enable the snare on step five and thirteen, and let's play. So you could continue like that. So let's find the hi hat, back to sequencer, and let's um, activate step one nine three eleven five thirteen. 7 and 15. Actually, let me change uh, the volumes. So let's go to mixer, find the I heart. Yeah, and then let's decrease the volume a little bit. Okay, perfect. Let's exit the mixer view now. So that's one way to, to record, of course. Um, and so far I have demonstrated only drums. So, so let's record, uh, let's try with a, a synth. So let's click on part one. Okay, if you try with a synth in this way, look what happens in the sequencer. It always repeats the same note, which is a, in this case a C. Doesn't really work very well, right? If you want to create a melody. So let's click on each step to to remove uh, the, the activated steps. So another way would be to go to keys and um, here you can change um, your uh, um, uh, scale if you want to, as I demonstrated in another video. But you can click on record now and then click play and then record a melody just uh, hitting on the pad. Okay, so we recorded something, probably not the best recording, I'm not a tempo, but that helps also with what I want to show you um, later on, which is the step editor. Now, I could go to another part, so we could go to part number two, okay, where I have another synth. I could go to wave, and in this case, for example, choose, uh, why not, an instrument like... Um, uh, let's see, why not the music box, okay, click wave to exit. Let's enable poly for polyphony, otherwise it will be mono. And now let's go to chord, and you see there are all chords per each pad. Of course, if you didn't have poly, you would have not heard the, the, the chord, so if I deactivate it, you hear only one note, okay? Now in terms of what chords are being played, so enter the menu, Okay, go to pattern and then scroll down. Here it says chord set, set one. Click on it, click again, and you can change the type of chord. 
So try, so try different ones. Let's click exit. So I could use these again to record um, um, chords in this way. So click plus record play. And I'm not creating, I'm not focusing on the, on creating a nice melody. I'm just um, demonstrating the different capabilities. And you could go on like this and do the same on Slice. So you've seen uh, in a previous tutorial that you could load a sample. Let's try like so. And um, let's load that sample in. And then we could use one of the samples to record that in as well. So record play. Okay, that is all good. And that is one way to do that. But let's say that now I want to go deeper and then have a look at the steps which I have recorded. Okay, let's go back to part number one and let's click now on the edit button here. As you can see, it puts you straight away in, in sequencer mode and it also it shows you up here the step editor, which is really, really nice. So first of all, you have 16 step, which you can choose like so. And when you click on a step where there is a note which has been recorded or a step recorded or activated, then it will play that note. The other thing you can do is you can use the pads here to move between the different steps. And as you can see, it shows you here the step you're moving towards to. Okay. The other thing you can do is if you click on one step, then you can click up here and it says edit step length. So you can edit the length and you use uh, uh, this dial here to change the length, like so. You can change also the velocities, use the same dial. You can change time shift, so you can delay. Look on the screen, it starts to delay um, the position of that note. And that is used to if you want to create some interesting patterns. So let's, let me show you. So you can put the steps not in sync, which um, may be something you want to do. Then you have the ability to have strokes, which I'm going to show you these on part nine. So let's go to part nine, where we have the kick drum. Let's go to this step. And let's say here on, we change to be two lines and it's like the ratchet function. So you hear hopefully that uh, is played twice uh, the sample. You can have it also to play three times. So hopefully, hopefully you can hear that, but just to be absolutely sure, let's go to mixer and let's say solo that and play. You can hear that the ratchet has been played for that particular step. So let's exit again the mixer and let's click edit again. So let's go back to part number one. So this is the pattern which has been created. So I was explaining that you can change the stroke here. And then here you have a set of condition which is really, really comprehensive. And I'm not going to go through them in this tutorial because I think it deserves a tutorial in itself. But you have condition like uh, play based on the previous step being uh, activated or not, etc., etc. So you have a lot uh, of different options. For now, I'm not going to show you that. I will show you all the conditions in a different tutorial. Up here, you have the note, which has been played in this case, C4 for uh, the first voice, and you can decide to have a note for other voices as well. So in sequencer mode under edit, you could choose to actually um, move down the pad like so, and um, be on a note and insert a note, like so. And you can use that almost like a step of recording, right? But there is also another mode, which is the key mode, okay? And this is quite interesting. So you have to select a note and it will show you which note is being played and then you can change it. Okay. So that's another way to actually to actually modify the steps inside the step editors. Now let's move to part number two. That shows you the chords which have been recorded there, right? 
Let's go to the next part. This is where the sample was recorded, right? The slice which was played at these intervals. So let's try to make some alteration. Let's go back to part number one, okay? So in this case, it said C4 there. Okay, let's remove that. Let's go to the first step and let's press um, C4 again. So that's a bit better, so let's play. Okay, so then let's go to part number nine, like so. Let's go to that particular step. Let's remove the ratchet because we don't want it anymore. So let's scroll that. Okay, let's play again. Okay, doesn't sound good yet, not in time. So perhaps we can go back again. Let's play again. You see this note, which is positioned there, this G4. So why don't we move it? Let's click that to deactivate it. Just go to the previous step and press C4. Let's play again. Okay, and then of course, when you finished, you can click edit to exit the step editor. So I hope um, uh, this was useful. So we have covered how to record a drum pattern just using the sequencer. And uh, also we have learned how to record uh, in real time just using the keys. And then we looked at the step editor and how to modify the sequencer and key modes under the edit mode um, steps in the step editor. Okay, I uh, hope you enjoyed. See you in the next video. Thank you. Bye.